crazy, man. That seems to happen to me a lot. Hope to, I'm gonna break something or I'm gonna lose another camera or... It happens. And good morning. Gonna head out right now. Uh, go shoot some clouds. I'm gonna show you guys how I develop clouds first. I'm gonna say that there is no right or wrong answer. It, it's artwork. It's all subjective. And if you are being paid to shoot for a magazine or something, it's going to be generic and you're going to do it exactly the way it's wanted to do, just like Joe, Joe A does it, like Joe C does it. It's all going to be the same. It's, it's cookie cutter. But this is not that. We post to the internet. And so for us, I, I have to say this right from the top, this, there is no right, wrong, right or wrong answer. There isn't. It's your artwork. You do it the way you want to do it. You walk into somebody's house and you see that piece of artwork sitting up on top of the refrigerator that was drawn by their two or three year old. That is the most beautiful piece of artwork in the world. I know that. But aside from all that, I am going to show you guys how I develop clouds. James one time has mentioned, uh, mentioned to me, he said, your stuff looks like your clouds are so dramatic. And then the comment here from uh, right here from Just Cycling says, show us how you develop your photos. I'm going to show you how I develop my clouds. I like them to be very dramatic. A lot of the photographers that I follow, everyone has a different way of doing it. Adrian is a master with the filters. I'm, I'm not. I have filters. I've used filters. But I actually prefer doing it in, in the computer. Another thing is when I'm shooting, I always, always watch where my highlights are. I try not to clip the highlights with the blinkies and all. Um, you know, but we'll go over that later. Let's go get some photos right now and uh, let's get into it. Let's go. And I was going to head out riding in this stuff. Go figure that. Doesn't mean that I won't. This means that right now the photography was a little more at the forefront of my mind. All right. Now, gonna head out to those clouds out that way to go get some Payuma. It's done. <laughs> it's, it's gone now, complete whiteout. So we're gonna head back to the house. James is gonna head back to his house. Subscribe down here to my channel. <laughs> Subscribe right down there, right there to James's channel. 
We'll do some macro photography later on today. Image stacking and all that good stuff. Subscribe to James's channel. His <laughs> macro photography is off the chart. All right, let's head home and go do some editing. I'm cold and it's a complete whiteout now. All right. Okay, and now I'm back. I've already, out of all the, I don't know, 60, 70 shots that I, I've chosen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you can see them here on the screen. And of those seven, this is, this is my workflow. Yours may be completely different, and however you do it is entirely up to you. But this is the way I do it. Okay, so I know that all of these, um, also I do use Photoshop Lightroom Classic because it is my favorite. Okay, so the first thing I do on all of my stuff is I go down and I make sure that I've got the, the profile, the correct lens so that it's, it's flattened out. And everything I do, I bring up the noise reduction, let's say, to about 10, just to start with, before I go anywhere. This is a completely black picture. I know that. And this is my workflow. I hit auto to see what it's going to do for me, how it's going to, it's just going to blow everything out, and it just looks terrible. So I undo that. This is the cloud coming through. We're going to crop it. Two of my favorite Favorite settings are usually a one-to-one, -one, which I like a lot. And we're going to bring that in, and we're going to bring this down. We're going to center it. You've heard people mention the rule of thirds. It's a dumb rule. You place that, if you want this to be off up and over to the side like this, you place it any place you choose. It's your artwork. But for me right now, I'm going to leave this one in the center. I'm getting to the clouds in a moment. Okay, I'm done with that. So that's, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to bring out my shadows and bring it up. I'm going to bring up my exposure just a little bit. But I want to maintain my highlights, so I'm going to keep those highlights way down low. And I'm going to loosen, lighten up the blacks just a little bit on that. My whites is going to start to blow it out, so I'm going to bring those down as well. Expose it just a little bit more. A little more clarity to bring some of that out. And a little bit of dehaze to give that those clouds some pop. And vibrance. And it needs some blue to make it just a little bit colder. There we go. Shadows. I can get just a little bit more out of those, but not much. Darks, we're going to bring those down just a wee bit. I can also, if I bring my contrast down a little bit, I can get a little more out of that without destroying it. Okay. I do use two monitors when I edit, and they're set slightly different. Tried to get them the same, and if you're going to use one of those programs like a spider, I personally think that they're crap. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to bring the blacks all... I'm going to bring those back down just a little bit. There we go. And we'll give it just a little more vibrance to make it look like that's really showing some of the... Like it's really showing the refraction of the light coming through the clouds. It was awesome. It was just so amazing. I'm going to take these highlights down just a little bit more if I can. There we go. Now we're going to go in and we're going to sharpen it. And one cool thing about, about this is if you hold the Alt key on, on the PC, I'm not familiar with Mac, so I can't tell you on that one. I'm going to slide this masking all the way up, 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 up up, 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 until I just have a little bit showing. Okay, now I'm going to go in, I'm going to use this, click over here. I'm going to sharpen it, sharpen it, sharpen it. Okay, and so for right now, I think, I think I'm going to go with that. It's a little noisier than I would like, but, um, I'll add a little bit more noise reduction, maybe go to about 20. And I'm going to call that one done. It's dramatic to me, and I like that. But what you're here to see 
Let's take this one. We'll come back to that one. Right now I'm going to go over here. This was also shot at that same time, and I think my I had my uh, white balance set at 3500 to give it that blue, and I like that this was a longer exposure. I think it was 10 seconds. And sometimes I will go through and I will copy and paste this because I'm using the same lens, same setup. Now it's flattened out. Uh, a little bit of noise reduction just to start. I'm going to bring the whole thing just a little bit brighter so that these clouds come out. I'm going to give it a little more contrast to make everything stand out a little more. Get rid of some of the blue, maybe just a little bit, a little too much maybe. You can just see this one little star. There's oh, several stars. Cool. Oh, I was going for the clouds. We're going to take these highlights down just a little bit. We're going to bring the whites up, maybe just to give it a little more. We're going to take the darks down. And now it's just a little too blue, but we don't have to do it from there. A little bit more clarity. And again, please don't think that there's a right and a wrong, because there's not. This old lens of mine has a lot of dust and stuff in it at this point. I think it's time for a new one. So, ah, let's go ahead and clean that up. Let's, uh, I know that there's a smudge in a spot right there. Ignore how dirty that looks right there and how grainy it is. It will change. Hmm. All right. Normally I have to go through and clean these quite a bit. And I'm going to dehaze it just a bit. There we go to bring out some dark. Now, to me, that's just a little bit too blue, but I do kind of like the way the whites are sitting in there and the dramatic dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to take this blue and I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. I like that. And then I might, I could do just a little more over here. And again, you must season to taste for you. That puts a little bit back in, but it puts it in in a different way. Okay. Now up on top over here, uh, let's try this. We're going to bring down a gradient on that. And for right now, we're going to go ahead and reset that. There we go. You can see how much is going to be affected by that gradient, which is exactly where I want it. We're going to bring up, we're going to bring down the contrast to make it a little bit more even with that sky. And we're going to bump up, bump it up just a little bit more in brightness to kind of even the whole thing out. I'm used to looking at both monitors when I'm, and the light right now from this light for this camera is actually kind of in my eyes. So. Come around to give that corner over here just a little bit more. Maybe just a little bit more clarity because that does bring it out. We're going to give it just a little bit more of the whites to pull those up just a wee bit, make it just a little brighter. And I think for right now, I'm going to go with that and call that one done. But that's not why you're here. We're going to get some dramatic clouds now with this shot right here. Man, this was unbelievably beautiful. So again, if you look right here, you can see one of those big dust spots that I was talking about. So we're going to clean that off. Boom, done. Okay. There will be several more. And uh, in this, there's always a bunch up in the corners up here. You can kind of see those too. So I'll quickly take care of those, get those out of the way. Done. All right. And I will go back to this other one. I will show you one last secret sauce that I think makes them look fantastic. So I'm going to come back in over here now. And I have normally would have copy pasted everything if I was doing a big batch of them. Okay. 
that image is now flat. If you don't know what that looks like, it went from that to flat. Okay. <clears throat> and sometimes I look at it and I think, well, do I want my shadows down at the bottom to be really bright, or do I want everything down below just to be con complete darkness? And in this case, little bit of noise reduction to start with, which smooths it out. Works really well when you're doing portraits too. Okay, uh, let's check the auto, see what the auto does to it. Sometimes it makes it look really nice like that. And I think for this one, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more. Give it just a little bit more contrast. Because I like this down at the bottom really contrasty. Saturate it, because I like a very saturated look. But these clouds don't look ominous. So, again, we're going to pull down. We go. We're going to see how much is being affected by that. All of that. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit more. Okay. About there. And now... We're going to bring it down, bring down the exposure, make it nice and dark, and give it just maybe a little bit more contrast, increase the darks just a little bit more. Now it's really blue, so we're going to pull it, we're going to move the slider away from the blue to give it more yellow, but not too, too far. Okay, and in this case, I might come up to my saturation and maybe just desaturate it just a little tiny bit. There we go. That looks pretty ominous with the... I like it. Okay, highlights. Let's take some of these highlights down. Let's make that darker as well. There's still a little bit, a bit much blue in here, so again, I'm going to come down over here. Blue. Let's pull that back just a little bit. There we go. Another one that kind of throws you off is yellows. Yellows, blues, and oranges, at least it does me. So I'm going to back those down just a little bit too. Okay, done. Let's take a look at that. I like it overall. If it needed more, this is just an if. You could always use your brush tool. Okay, we're going to go with a brush about that size. That's going to be good. What I want to do is I want to lighten up in through here just a little bit, maybe over here. So I'm going to set my exposure. I'm going to estimate it to come up just a wee bit. The size of that, I've got it at a feather of an 80 and a flow of about 72, the density of about 67, which is what I use a lot. I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit and reduce the contrast, and we're going to come in here, we're just going to lighten that up just a little bit, might be a little much. There we go. And what we'll do with that also is we will add a wee bit of texture, and some clarity. Dehaze, we'll done do the dehaze. There we go. And we'll do the same now over here. And maybe on that one, because that looks like that might be a little bit dark. Maybe right through there. And maybe just a little bit in through there too. Okay, I'm done with that. I'm going to brighten the whole thing up. If I were going to print, I would definitely brighten it up a little bit more than that. I'm going to brighten the entire image up. Those clouds just look ominous. Now, if you're not satisfied with that, you can always click back in here. Highlight that. I have my exposure at negative 35, so I'm going to reduce it just a little bit more. There we go. A little bit of clarity on that which does bring up some of the highlights. And I think overall, I'm pretty happy with that. One other thing, when I'm out there focusing, I focus usually on a ridge, on something, like right about here is where I would have focused, in this area right there. 
And I use autofocus most of the time, about 90% of the time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more masking to find out where my highlights are or where my, my ridges are. That's about all I'm going to try and make those sharper. Let's go find it right about there. Since I'm only sharpening little bits, I can actually push the sharpening. There's one last thing now. I am going to edit this in Topaz Sharpen AI. I'm going to edit with the copy and Lightroom adjustments. I'm going to edit. It's going to take a minute. And while I'm waiting for that, I'm going to go back in. When I've edited something and I'm happy with it, I always mark. I've edited that one. And I've edited this one. And then this one is the one that will be in Topaz AI. And I can tell that because of the, it goes from an NEF file to an edit TIFF. And I am going to select this one with the others. I'm going to highlight them. And of course, my favorite color red. So that I can instantly, when I start going through, let's say that I were editing a hundred different photos for whatever. And I didn't like every single one. I would probably leave it there for right now. I can reference back if I need something or I want to look at it. But if it's marked in red once I start going, or if I wanted to designate something different for something else, I might designate it in green or blue and just keep those grouped together. And I can see some of the dirt in there that I didn't clean out. Normally I would spend a lot of time, but for the sake of this video and just trying to show you how I do it. Again, this is just my, the way I do it. And I will say one last time, I hate these people that sit there and critique and put, pull things apart. If you don't like it, don't look at it. This is my artwork. This is how I envisioned it. I have used to say all the time, I love, James and I will go out and we'll shoot two, the same thing we tend to shoot, and we edit them completely different. And it's a beautiful thing, man. It's your artwork. It's your interpretation. It's not right or wrong. It's cool. So I'm going to let this go for a little bit, and this will be the final image. Thank you for watching i really really do appreciate it just like always i it doesn't say johnny pink here but uh i was out shooting and if, even if it was it would say it on the shirt underneath so i'm gonna say thank you i appreciate you watching please there is a subscribe button down there it's this big red button and you are most welcome to click that I, it would be awesome and if you give it a thumbs up leave me a comment uh let me know what i did wrong maybe what how you do things I'm curious on all of it because, again, no right or wrong, man. It's artwork. Have a fantastic day out there. Um, have a fantastic day out there. Whatever you're going to do, make it a great day. I hope this, now that the area heater has gone on, it's really cold here in California. It's got to be 55 degrees, man. It's freezing. Have a fantastic day out there, Johnny Pink. I'll see you guys out on the road. We'll see you. That's the new normal. Okay, ready? Okay. Bye. One more time, one more time, I missed it. Okay, good. And here's the hat. Oh, yeah. The hat version. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, man. We'll see ya.